Hey there, welcome back to this Flame game development series where we are making a simple 2D platformer using Flame Engine. In the previous section, we covered the initial setup for this project. And in this part, we'll actually start writing some code to display a level in the game. But before we can do that, we need to design a level. Now, there are quite a few ways to go about this. But probably the best way to design levels for a 2D platformer is to use a tool called Tiled. And luckily, Flame supports reading and rendering level files generated by Tiled. And that is why we added Flame Tiled as a dependency. So first, let's download the Tiled level editor. Downloads for Tiled are hosted on itch.io and you can get there from the link given in the description. From the download page, just select a version appropriate for your platform and install it. Once that is done, launch the Tiled Editor and you should see something like this. Now Tiled has a lot of features to make level creation easier. But I am going to cover only those features which we will be actually using for this project. Note that I am not an expert on Tiled. But if you are and you find me doing something that can be done in a better way, feel free to let me know in the comments. Anyways. So the two important file types that you can create in Tiled are Tile Maps and Tile Sets. Basically, the way Tiled works is you create your levels using some predefined tiles. Tiled then stores the coordinates of each tile from that level in a tile map. And information of each tile is stored in a tile set file. Simply put, Tile Map is the file that actually represents a level and tileset is a file that holds all the tiles that can be used in a level. The first thing that we need to create is a tileset. And we can do this by going to File New and then New Tileset. Now in this dialog, we need to provide a source image file for the tileset. Here I'll provide part to the spritesheet.png stored in our images folder. And you can see that by default, the name of image is used as name of the tileset as well. If you want, you can change this to better identify multiple tilesets from each other. I'll leave it as it is since I won't be creating more tilesets. After all this, there are some parameters that will help Tiled to understand the layout of our source image. These are width, height, margin and spacing. In this case, I know that width and height of each tile is 32 pixels and there is no margin or spacing in the source image. If you are using different assets, you might have to change these parameters. Ok, now let's click save as and save this tile set under the tiles directory of our project. Once you do this, your tile set will be opened and you should be able to see preview of each tile by clicking on them. Now that our tile set is ready, let's create a new tile map by going to file new and the new map. Similar to tileset, tilemap also has some properties to control how it is laid out. From all these, make sure that the orientation is set to orthogonal, tile layer format is set to base64 uncompressed and tile size is set to 32 by 32 pixels. For the map size, you can have your custom values. Since I want to keep the first level simple, I'll set this to 20 by 12 tiles. Now let's click on save as. I'll name this as level1.tmx and save it in the tiles folder of our project. Once you do that, your map should be opened in the editor. The middle section is your actual map. Then on the right side, you have the layers and tile sets panel. And you can see that the tile set that we created earlier is displayed here. Basically, how this works is you select a tile that you want to use from the tile set and then start placing that tile in the map like this. It is very similar to any other drawing app. I'll quickly undo this and make a simple level. First, let's fill the entire map with last tile. For this, I'll use the bucket fill tool. This will be the background color for the level. Then using the second last tile and the stamp brush tool, let's draw some platforms in this level. And once you are happy with your level, save the map. Now back in our project, if I open the tmx and tsx files, 
can see that they are simple XML files. So if you know what you are doing, you can even manually modify some parameters from here. But anyways, let's close all these files and see how to render level 1 in flame. For this, first I'll open up the main.dart file and remove all the comments. Also don't need this my home page widget, so I'll delete that as well. Next, for the home property of material app, I'll use a scaffold widget with its body set to game widget. Game widget is a class that comes from flame package that can render a flame game as flutter widget. And as you can see, the widget needs a game instance. To provide this game object, we'll first need to create our own game class. For this, I'll create a new folder inside the lib folder called game. We'll keep all the game related code inside this folder. Now let's create a new file here called game.dart. Inside this new file, I'll create a new class called simple platformer extending the flame game. Flame game is a class that does a lot of heavy lifting for you. And as the documentation says, it is the recommended base class to use for most of the games. Now back in main.dart, we can provide an instance of simple platformer to this game widget. Although this will work, one important thing to note here is that simple platformer is not a flutter widget. Which means, if we create an instance of this class in build method, every time flutter decides to rebuild current widget, a new instance will be spawned of our game. And we don't want that. So to avoid this, one recommended way is to create a global instance of your game and use that in the game widget, like this. But for now, I won't use this instance because while debugging, I want the game to refresh on every hot reload. Otherwise, I'll have to manually keep restarting the app to see minor changes. I'll just add a to-do note here so that I'll remember to change this while releasing the game. Now back in game.dart, let's display something in our game. For this, I'll override the onload method of this class. We can use this method to load all the required assets and perform any kind of initialization before the game starts receiving updates. Before I start implementing this method, let's talk about what Flame component system is and how Flame works in general. So the basic building block of any Flame game is component. Roughly speaking, it is similar to what widgets are to Flutter. Your flame game is just a tree of components receiving multiple updates per second. Flame offers quite a few components out of the box, each with its own unique set of features. And similar to widgets, you can mix and match them to create complex components. One of these components is the tiled component. It comes from the flame tiled package and can be used to read a tmx file as a flame component. So in this onload method, I'll create a new tiled component and store it in a variable called level. Now this default constructor of tiled component is not of much use to us. So instead, I'll use the tiled component.load constructor. This one needs file name of a tmx file and a destination tile size. The file name will be level1.tmx and tile size will be 32 by 32 which is my source tile size. If you want to change the scale of your map, you can do so by changing the tile size here. Now since this constructor returns a future of tiled component, we'll wait for it to complete by adding await keyword here and making the onload method async. And after this, we can simply call the add method to add the level to our game. This much code should get the level rendering in our game. So I'll quickly launch the game on my emulator. As you can see, the level is visible in the game, but the orientation is not correct. I would like the game to be in landscape and full screen mode. To achieve this, at the very start of onload method, we can call full screen and set landscape methods on flame.device. Both these methods are async, so I'll await for them to complete. If I save this, you can see that the game is now full screen and in landscape mode. But still, the level seems too small for the screen. 
We can change the tile size or room level of our game to make it fit the screen. But this will just fix the problem for this particular screen. On a larger display, it will again look small. This is very common scenario in games where different screen resolutions drastically affect how the game looks. This can make the game completely unplayable for some players. Some might even have an unfair advantage over others just because they have a larger screen and can see some extra area of the level. One way to solve this is to see the game world through a fixed rectangle and then uniformly scale that rectangle to fill the shortest dimension of player's screen. The result of this is that on some screens you'll see black bars along one dimension. But then each player experiences the game in exactly the same way. And because this is such a common problem, Flame already provides an easy way to solve this using viewports. So all we have to do is set camera.viewport to a fixed resolution viewport and provide a vector 2 defining the fixed rectangle that I talked about. I'll set my fixed resolution to 640 by 330. And as you can see, now the level has filled pretty much the entire screen. Just to demonstrate how the black bars will look, I'll reduce the height of my fixed resolution viewport. And now you can see some black bars at top and bottom of the screen. Okay, so now that we can render this level in our game, let's do some minor refactoring so that level related code does not pollute this file. First, I'll create a subdirectory under game folder called level. And inside this, I'll create a file called level.dart. In this file, I'll create a new class called level extending from component, which is the most basic type of component that Flame offers. In this level class, I'll create a string member to store the name of level loaded by this component. As this member is final, I'll add it as an input to level constructor. Now similar to game class, we can override the onload method for a component to perform component specific initialization. Here, I'll cut and paste the tiled component loading code from onload of our game class and instead of this hard coded level name, I'll use the level name variable. Back in game.dart, I can now just create an object of level with input as level1.tmx and add it to the game. It will still work the same. The reason why I did it this way is because in future, we'll need some custom logic for reading more data from TMX files for spawning some objects. So having a level component will make it easier to do that. But right now, let's add some more code which will allow us to switch between levels. So I'll quickly create one more level using tiled and save it as level2.tmx. I purposefully made this one a bit wider so that we can see the camera moving as player moves across the level in future videos. Ok, now back in our game.dart file, I'll add a new member of type nullable level in simple platformer. This will store a reference to the current level. Next, I'll replace the local level variable in onload with current level. Now to switch between levels, I'll create a new method called load level which expects a level name as input. Inside this method, first I'll conditionally call remove from parent on current level. This will remove the current level from game if there is any. Then I'll create a new level with given level name and store it as current level. And finally, I'll add the new current level to the game. Now we can replace this level loading from on load with a single call to load level. And if I change the level name to level2.tmx, you can see that the second level is now loaded. So basically, this gives us the ability to switch between levels from anywhere. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to follow along. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.